We're getting to the end of the year, and if you're like me, your schedule's going to get crazy busy. And before it gets too crazy, I wanted to clear up some loose ends regarding Evernote. I wanted to show you a few new things and answer a bunch of really good questions that I've been receiving from my viewers. Hi, I'm Dave Edwards. In case you don't know, I'm a certified Evernote expert. I help people like you solve their productivity issues through Evernote-based information that I collect on monthly calls with the Evernote team, uh, plus some Slack messages I get from them, and my own experiences from using the app. Sign up for my weekly newsletter at daveedwardsmedia.com slash contact. It's absolutely free. I write about Evernote and productivity and leadership and all sorts of other good things. So let's get started. So two features that I've demonstrated on previous videos have already been updated. So this is one of the benefits of Evernote's slow release strategy. A lot of people get frustrated when Evernote announces a new feature and they don't get it right away. Evernote, like a lot of developers, use kind of a staged rollout. Instead of rolling everything out at once, such as the infamous version 11, uh, their slow rollout strategy gives them a chance to improve their features along the way, as they have now. Let's start with AI meeting notes. This has been around for some time. Typically, when you record a meeting or some activity, in this case, I just uh, did a little demo read of some copy. Um, once you finish and you hit the transcribe button, it will give you a transcription of what has been set. Because I just read it, there's really only one speaker that's involved. Because I just did this, it's saying that it, it doesn't have a variety of speakers to work with. Uh, but once you do, you click on this button and you can eliminate speakers or add names or whatever. So I only have one speaker, but let's say I had more than one speaker. I could name these, I could add or remove them. If right now I come over to this little icon of the person, there is a slash mark through it, and I click on it, it says, do you want to regenerate this transcript without the speakers? It explains what it's going to do. Let's ask it to regenerate uh, that transcript from this audio. And here it is without any of the speakers. Now, clearly, if I had multiple speakers, it would have removed all of the speakers from this. Now you can do, uh, you can copy your transcript. You can do all of the other things that you've been able to do with AI meeting notes. But being able to uh, add or remove speakers and uh, regenerate the transcription, those are new. The next update comes with math equations. Uh, I think I demonstrated this on a, on a recent video, but if I just type the numbers 4 plus 10, it would have generated the answer to that uh, right away. But now I have to type the equal sign in order to get the answer, and then I can accept it. And this has actually worked out great because there have been times where I have been just typing numbers uh, that I didn't want to treat as an equation. So they've made this update from the uh, early uh, beta. You can also turn off this component of doing math equations in settings. And when you come over to settings and go to notes, uh, you will see all of the checkboxes that are there. But the new one is, uh, do if you have this box checked, you will always have to type the equal sign in order for it to suggest the result. So keep this in mind. If you if you don't want to have to add the equal sign uh, to get the equation, you can just check this box off. I'm personally going to keep this on. A move from math equations to note link previews. If I add a link to a note, uh, you will see it now appear in this format, offering you a preview of the note. This certainly makes it stand out a lot more, but you have some options here too. You can come over to the three dots and you can say, you know what? I don't like it displayed with the preview. I'd like it to just have the title displayed. Or you can say, I just want the text. So these are the options that you have that are new. 
you can also do the other features that uh, have been there before. Now you can do this on a note by note basis, but if you want to make it permanent, if you say, look, I don't want the preview, I just want the note title, or, or I want the title to appear so I can click on this and go to the link, you can make that permanent. Uh, and the way you do it is by going back to preferences. Then once you're in preferences, go to notes. And now, when you get to links and attachments, you can designate how you want these to appear going forward. So notes from Evernote, you might want the preview from. Uh, you might want to preview uh, uh, your images. But this is where you could decide as to how you want your links to appear on all future notes. Now, notes that you've created in the past before you've done this, you will have to go back and manually do it. But once you have this checked, all of your links inside Evernote will appear as the preview. And by the way, a, another small change, and I do mean it to be a small change. Did you notice that when I uh, clicked to get to preferences and settings and all these kinds of things, my avatar moved to the bottom? of the screen. It used to be up here at the top. As I said, it's a small change. Uh, I don't click on this often, and I don't know that too many people do. So, you know, I guess it makes sense. From what they told us is they just moved it to the bottom because it isn't used as frequently as all of these options are, and they wanted to uh, make it a little bit cleaner by pushing this up and bringing your avatar uh, to the bottom. As I said, a small change, but I just wanted you to know that it happened in case one day you're looking for your avatar and it's no longer here. And finally, Evernote posted this announcement that it is ISO 2701 certified. Because I don't do geek speak, I looked up and here's what I found. ISO 27001, I guess maybe that's how you say it, is a globalized, recognized standard for establishing, implementing, maintaining, and continually improving an information security management system, helping organizations protect sensitive data by managing risks to confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Okay. And it goes on. So those in the know say this is a really big thing when it comes to security. Yay! So those are some of the updates. I told you there were quite a few. Now let's move on to some things that my viewers have asked about. Homer asked, how do I change my plan back to the free plan? I've actually been getting a lot of similar questions, and this push started when Evernote announced its new pricing structure, and a lot of people are thinking about either going back to the free plan or getting out of Evernote altogether. Many more, of course, like me, are going to stay because Evernote is a valuable feature, but you do you. You can do this in settings, move back to free, and then after your billing period ends, your account shifts to the free plan on its own. A similar question uh, from a couple of other viewers uh, goes something like this. Will I lose my notes if I downgrade? Well, if you move to the starter plan or the free plan, your notes are gonna be there, right? Your notebooks will stay the same. Your tags don't change. You can do your search, your view, editing, everything. Your setup will keep working, but here's the thing. Your problem will be when you want to add the next thing. I mean, if you already have 50 notebooks and you drop down to starter, that only allows 20. I mean, you're not going to lose any of your content. It's just you can't make another notebook until your total falls under 20. I mean, the free plan, as far as I'm concerned, is really to demonstrate how Evernote works. I think if you're really going to use Evernote for any type of productivity or keeping track of anything, you're probably going to exceed those limits. Ferretin wrote, So far, almost nothing has been done on the calendar. The interface is still in terrible shape. Please let Evernote staff know. I think he's saying, could you tell them? Could they create a more functional calendar similar to Google Calendar? Oh man, they've heard this from me. They've heard this from a lot of other people. And here's what they've told us. The calendar interface is actually much more complicated than was originally anticipated when Evernote announced several years ago that it was going to add a calendar feature. 
And because every calendar platform is different, they have to find a way to work and create code that works with all of them. And that's why you haven't seen them expand the calendar to other platforms like iCalendar, the one that I use. Uh, the team seems to be concentrating on other features lately. So you still can interface with Google for your calendar. They have their own calendar system. In my estimation, it falls short. But my bigger problem is I'm vested in the Mac system and the Apple ecosystem. So my calendar is iCalendar. And if they don't adapt Evernote to iCalendar, I'm not going to migrate. And I'm not sure where the calendar is on their priority list, but I think it's not among their higher priority items. I would not hold your breath. So look, I'm going to stop there. Keep your email questions coming. And if you have ideas for future videos, I'd love those too. Post them below or email me directly at daveedwards at outlook.com. Hey, also, by the way, I'm scheduling one-on-one -on -one consultations for the new year. In case you haven't heard, I work one-on-one -on -one with individuals to help you get the most out of Evernote. So, you know, if my videos help you, but you'd like to take the next step and you'd like to use Evernote to its fullest capacity, what I do for my clients is we share screens. You show me your system, I show you my system, and I'll offer suggestions on how you can adapt your system so that it can be more productive. I've had many, many, many clients say that this has been a very valuable service. I also offer a free 30-minute call. It's kind of a get acquainted call. So you can describe your problem and I can make sure that I can help you before we schedule our actual work sessions. Uh, many of my clients, um, you know, we meet once or twice and then you're good to go. Uh, some clients I meet with almost every week. Whatever your need is, that will determine how far you want to go with the system. But again, if you're interested in a free 30-minute call or learning more about my one-on-one -on -one Evernote consultations, just go to daveedwardsmedia.com Evernote.